Hey, what's up, YouTube? Back once again. Last time I left off, I had taken off the cylinder head off the 95 Geo Metro. Uh, like I said, it's much easier to work on this thing when it's on a bench versus when it's on the engine block itself. All right, so there she is off the block and on the bench. And just to illustrate exactly what I mean, that right there is the intake manifold. And as you can see, there's all kinds of bolts that attach the intake manifold to the cylinder head right there. So it's a whole lot easier just to pull the whole lump off and put it on your bench and you can access all the bolts you need to access. All right, so this head right here actually weighs about, heck, probably about uh, 20 pounds. It's actually pretty tiny compared to other cylinder heads. Case in point, I've got a Honda cylinder head right here. I'll pick it up and put it beside and show you side-by-side -side comparison there. Side-by-side -side comparison. The Geo Metro head weighs about half what the Honda head weighs. Not sure you can, if you can get an accurate depiction of the size difference, but uh, the, the Geo Metro is literally a street legal go kart. And I've got a just for a little bit extra comparison. I've got the intake manifold of the Geo Metro beside the intake manifold of the Honda Accord. Here the Honda Accord is the one right behind it. That's a 2.2 liter. And the Geo Metro is a 1.0 liter three cylinder. The Honda Accord being a four cylinder. So the difference in the intake manifold is pretty much the same um, proportionate difference to the head size. Alright, so figured you guys might want to check that out. It's a pretty cool little bit of trivia right there. Alright, so back to the purpose of the video. I pulled the head off the block, put it here on the bench. And what I'm doing is conducting a leak down test. The number one cylinder was the one that had no compression, low compression. I was able to diagnose the problem by first, according to one of the previous videos, applying an air nozzle, and there was air leaking out of the exhaust valve right there. Well, I went ahead and pulled off the head and solidified that with a liquid leak down test. Okay, I've got some alcohol here. And just to demonstrate to you exactly what I mean, I'm going to go ahead and pour some alcohol in number three, number two, and number one. Observe the exhaust port of number one. Give it a minute. All right. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there is tons of liquid leaking out of the number one exhaust port. And if you take a look at the number two and number three exhaust ports, there's no liquid whatsoever. So when the piston is coming up to the head to compress the air and gasoline mixture, it can't get a good compression because you got compression leaking out of the exhaust valve. On the other side is the intake valves, I mean the intake ports. 
there is no leakage whatsoever in these intake ports. It's very rare that an intake port will have damage unless you got a timing belt breakage or something like that, which would cause the piston to collide with the valve. It's more common, ten times more common, for the exhaust valve to have leakage because you have the hot exhaust gases going out that ex ex exhaust valve all the time. That's its job, that's its purpose. So it's by far more, more prone to uh, leakage. And that's pretty much how that works. And for you guys out there that don't know how this all works, I'll make another video explaining to you how the valves work, what makes it open and close. For those of you who are not too sure about that. All right, but for now, that's pretty much it. Um, my next task is going to be to go ahead and clean up the uh, old gasket material on this head here, as well as on the block. Extract the exhaust, the bad exhaust valve. Uh, go ahead and reseat that, and I'll show you how to do that as well. And um, I was thinking about doing all three exhaust valves, but there's no reason to because the other two are perfectly fine so I figured maybe I'll just go ahead and put some lapping compound down there and just give it a light reseating but no need to bother it it's not leaking or anything like that it's probably not the most professional thing to do because a prof you professionals out there are probably saying oh go ahead and do the whole thing because it's just gonna leak later well this is it's gonna be my daily driver um, and if worse comes to worse, and I do run into problems in the future, it's going to be a weekend job to go ahead and just pop this off again. But like I said, I see no reason to at this point. Um, I'm pretty anxious to get this car on the road. So I'm just going to deal with the problem at hand. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. If you uh, have any questions or comments, go ahead and post it. Until next time, later.